In this video, I'm going to show you how to install ShareWall from this to this. Let me show you exactly how I did it. ShareWall is when you take a piece of a rated sheathing and you apply it to a wood frame wall from the bottom plate all the way to the top plate in order to prevent the wall from shifting side to side. I live here in California where we have seismic activity, so that's one reason why I'm doing it. Second reason is I want to be able to hang whatever I want to hang on these garage walls later and not have to worry about there being a stud in the right position for me to fasten to. So the sheets that I purchased are um, four foot by 10 foot long and that's because my walls are higher than eight feet. It's something very important you need to understand when you go buy your sheathing. You want to make sure it's rated sheathing, structural rated. Okay, one last thing before I get the install started and that is I am also a DIY homeowner just like you. I help all you DIYers with your home projects by making step-by-step -step instructional videos to make this easy on you and show you how to save money doing it yourself. So please like and subscribe my channel and when you're done watching the video, share it with the world for me so I can keep cranking out these videos. So let's get right back to that install. So before you start hanging the sheets, you need to do a little prep work. As you can see, I got a, a black mark on the ceiling about every 16 inches because that's where the studs are. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to make sure that we know where the studs are. Because once you put that big sheet up, you're not going to see it which means you won't be able to nail through the sheet into the stud like you need to. You might miss, you might be over here, you might be over here. So it's real important to do a little prep work before you put your sheets up to make the install go much easier. And I'm gonna use the same process for the bottom of the stud in the wall too. I'm gonna to use a, uh, a yellow crayon here, construction crayon, and just mark the concrete. So one very important thing you want to do here is you want to take some rough measurements from one end of the wall to the other with the height because there's no way that this foundation is going to be perfectly level. It's been here since 1944. So what I'm going to do is just take my tape and start from one end and work my way to the other. From the bottom of the sill plate all the way up to the top plate where the ceiling is, I got about a hundred and a half, 100, 100, a little over 100. The average of the measurements I just took is between 100 inches and 101 half inches. So I'm gonna cut my first sheet at 100 inches long so that when I go to put my sheets up, I'm not gonna get bound up on the ceiling and have to beat it in with a hammer. Okay, now I'm gonna use my T-square and line up my marks and describe it. Okay, I'm gonna be using my Milwaukee M18 cordless skill saw for this uh, cutting. What we need to figure out here is, well, which stud is my four foot wide sheet gonna land on? Find the nearest stud to 48, under 48 inches, and that's right here. Uh, let's say 44 and a quarter, and I'm gonna double check the top too, to make sure it's matching. 44 up here. So that means my stud is a little bit crooked. So 44, 44 and a quarter. I'll split that down the middle. Cutting in your first sheet is the crucial one. The rest should just fall in line. You may have to cut a little bit off here and there, but overall it should come together pretty easy. Uh, so take your time measuring this. Measure twice, cut once. Okay, so you're probably wondering what are all these lines for that come on the sheathing? Well, let me explain that. Some wood framing is 16 on center, some is 24 inches on center. So right here, if you look, we got 16 here on this line, 32 on this line, and then 48 here. So we'll get a nail here, 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 and here. And this is what I'm gonna be using because my walls are 16 on center. But if you have a 24 inch on center, you're gonna use this middle line. So we can nail here, we can nail here, and we can nail here at the edge. That's what that's for. But if you want to use those lines, you have to cut those in strategically when you cut your sheet. So let's see if I can do it without screwing it up. But you got to make sure you pull from the factory edge, the factory cut edge. So if you see, it's 16 here, 32 there, 44. So when I cut this the long way, 
it should line up really good and then my next sheet I shouldn't have to cut at all as far as the width only the height between the floor and the ceiling okay so now what we need here is a chalk line and some chalk to go in the chalk line just open up that little door right there kind of shake it in a little bit okay now that your chalk line is loaded up with chalk okay, if, make sure there's no bow in your sheet otherwise you won't get an accurate line there you go okay now you want to make sure you don't cut into your good sheets below this one so i'll just put a two by four underneath another piece of wood right here by the way there will be a link to all the tools i'm using in the description below i'm not being paid uh to sponsor anybody but i will might make a uh, small commission if you purchased uh anything through my link so now we can just pick it up and bring it in the garage and get it installed so we pulled off the factory edge cut edges on the bottom so this here needs to go this way just like that so i got my level here i'm gonna make sure it's plumb definitely looks good i'm gonna use my uh, milwaukee uh, 20 to 22 degree framing nailer this is the uh, grip right uh, collated framing nails plastic strip round head uh, two inch by 0.113 inch and that's a ring shank I have a half inch sheathing, so I have an inch and a half of penetration, which is plenty, more than enough. Some other people may recommend using a two and a half inch, but do what you want, do what makes you comfortable. I'm totally fine using this. Always make sure your corners are sucked in. Don't just throw this on here and shoot. You gotta make sure you push it in. Okay, so let's talk about nailing. Every six inches on the edges and the field of the sheet, 12 inches is good. Okay, so at the beginning of the video, I did show that I was marking uh, where all the studs are at the top and the bottom of the wall, and my lines are lining up with my marks. So I can use these lines on the sheet, so I did not screw this up. Time for the next sheet, and this time I have to cut out my opening for my wall receptacles. For this, I'm going to need my framing square. So give me an accurate scribe point all the way over there. My new sheet has to clear these tabs. Same thing on the top tabs. 39 and a half, 44 and a quarter. Now I want to get my distance 10 and a half and 15 and a quarter. Now the measurements I just took, so I made those marks here, made those marks here, and the square comes in very handy for this stuff because now you can trace everything over so it's nice and straight all the way over there. And I scribed them on all sides. Basically just utilizing that square. Here we go. So here's my box I got to cut out right here. I'm going to start with my skill saw, get as deep as I can without cutting past the lines, and I'll finish it off with my multi-tool right here. This is a great little device. There you go. Look at that. Sweet. That worked out really good. Cut it once. Measure twice, cut it once. I'm telling you. Take your time with your measurements. Because it can turn into a really bad day if you don't. That's really tight up here. Why is that so tight? Okay. Guess what? I gotta cut it again. Measure twice, cut it once, I'm telling you. But I can tell you this, my cut on my outlet is dead on. That worked out great. I'll be right back. So I cut a half inch off the top. Now, can any of you tell me why I didn't cut that half inch off the bottom? Well, if you can't figure that out, that's because it would have affected my box here because I pulled everything from the bottom to find my opening for my box. If I would have cut the bottom, it would have thrown everything off and I would have had to cut a new sheet. So keep those things in mind when you're trying to make adjustments. And this is just some of the shit you gotta deal with. You know, when you're working on a house, you're gonna run into challenges, obstacles, and you just gotta sit there and think about it for a minute and then figure it out. Another thing I wanna point out here is when you're putting sheets together, 
try to get at least a 16th to an eighth inch gap for expansion and contraction on the sheets. This way you don't have any buckling issues. It's two down and uh, three more to go. Another thing I got to cut into the sheathing is uh, you have a uh, 240 volt plug here for eventually I'll put a car charger there if I ever get an electric car. I do have a good video on that on the YouTube channel uh, with Isaac Cullen, the owner of Electric Brothers Company. Check it out. Okay, that's it for this video. Okay, I want to give a big shout out to two of my favorite customers. That's Kyle and Debbie. Congratulations on your new home. And Kyle, you had me in stitches when you said to me when I showed up at the inspection. So John, did you say the fourth inspection was free? <laughs> that was some funny shit. Anyway, uh, congrats on your new house. If you live in the Los Angeles area and need a home inspection, a sewer camera inspection, a mold inspection, a pool inspection, you can always give me a call. I am available for hire. Uh, so just check out my website, homeinspectionauthority.com. My phone number's right on there, or you can schedule online 24-7. The phone number's 800-950-8184. Was that fast enough for you?